This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, that was Psalm 118 verse 24 and I say that verse every day. Usually um, when I'm in my car and I'm on the way to work, I work at a daycare and my youngest daughter, she is in the pre-K class and I work in the infant room. My oldest daughter, she's in first grade, but she gets to drive to work with us. Um, she gets to have breakfast there uh, at the daycare and they actually have a bus that will bring her um, from the daycare to school, which is pretty convenient. So. Uh, it's cool. We get to ride together um, every morning to work and usually on our ride, um, not usually, every morning on our ride, um, I always pray over our day out loud with them and that is just a verse that I have always said and they pretty much have it memorized now too, which is really cool. Um, but the Lord has just been really highlighting this word rejoice to me for a while now. I want to say for like maybe a month or so, I have just been hearing the word in songs, you know, I've been hearing songs about rejoicing or I've been seeing the word, um, you know, when I'm out in public in random places or, you know, when I'm reading my Bible, I will just open up to random areas, you know, just to do my reading for the night and um, it will be verses about rejoicing or something. And so I've just been like, okay, you know, I got it, you know, you're trying to say something here. Um, so usually in my prayer time, with the Lord, I do tell him that he needs to be clear like that when he is speaking something to me. Um, sometimes I need things just kind of, you know, shoved right into my face for me to get them um, and for something to sink in. And so when he highlights something to me like this and in that way, then I'm like, okay, yeah, you're trying to say something. So what's up? And, and so, and I think that I feel, I think that I'm that way because when I feel like he's speaking something to me uh, or trying to get a message across, I I jump to doubting a lot of the times. Um, I'm like, yeah, maybe he's not. Maybe he's not speaking this thing to me or maybe, maybe this isn't coming from him. Maybe I'm making all of this up in my head. Um, you know, I'm human, I doubt. Uh, and that's just where my relationship and my faith, you know, needs to be stronger with him so that I don't doubt. Um, but you know, if it, when it is strong, when you have a good faith and your relationship with his, with him is strong, then he'll give you a discernment. Um, especially if you ask, if you ask for it. Um, but so kind of just a little bit of a side rant, this must be for somebody, but if, if you're ever in a situation, um, of any type of situation and you don't have a joy about it or you don't feel a peace about that thing or whatever it is that you think he's trying to tell you or whatever message it is you think that he's trying to get across. Um, if you don't feel a joy and if you don't feel a peace um, about that thing, then it most likely is not coming uh, from the Lord because in 2 Timothy um, chapter 1 verse 7, it says that God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but of, of power and love and a sound mind. And so if you have fear, if you have confusion, if you have unsettledness, um, you can know that that thing is not from the Lord, Lord or coming from him, um, that it's got to be maybe from your own thoughts or desires or emotions or from some other source um, or something, but, but not from the Lord. Because what's that quote that says, um, I'll put it on the screen, but no God, no peace. No God, no peace. So if you don't got the peace, if you don't have the joy, then you can be pretty sure that it's not coming from the Lord. Um, so yeah, little side rant, but hopefully, hopefully that help somebody out in some way um but yeah so I to I totally have a peace and a joy um you know I have felt a peace and a joy with this word being highlighted to me lately and so I really do truly feel that it's something that the Lord is speaking to me personally um and in, in my life that I really need to focus on rejoicing in this um, season that I'm in, in this new year, in this place that I'm in in my life right now, uh, that I really need to focus in on just really rejoicing. And he has placed it on my heart that it's not just, um, you know, an instruction for me, but that there are others of you out there uh, that he wants 
to really fo wants you guys to focus on rejoicing in your life right now as well. And so that's me why I'm here to pass on this message. Um, and so I came across an article and it's written by somebody named Emily Sachs. And it says, um, it's on rejoicing and why God desires us to do so. And so I will link um, the description, I, I will put in the description box below um, the link to her article. So you can go back and uh, check it out for yourself uh, and read it if you want. But I really liked her insight and her perspective uh, that she gave on rejoicing. And so I'm just going to pretty much sum it up for you guys, take some key points uh, from her article and just sum it up and share it with you guys. So all of the credit goes to her in her article and to the Bible verses that I pulled out of the Bible to kind of back this message up with. So let's jump right in to see what the Bible says uh, about rejoicing. I have a few scriptures um, to share with you guys. So just hang in with me here. I'm going to try to make this message uh, as, as quick as I can. Uh, so just hang in. It'll be a good message. And I do think that, um, you know, somebody's going to get something out of it. So just hang with me and listen first for a second here. Uh, the first scripture is first Chronicles, uh, 16, 10, and it says glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. And in, so there's, there's our command uh, to, to rejoice. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18, it says, again, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And then in Romans chapter 5, verses 3 to 5, and in James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. I'm not going to read um, those two scriptures right now just for time's sake, uh, I'll have them somewhere here on the screen so you can go back and you can read those and I recommend doing so. But they talk um, they talk about how we're called to rejoice in the middle uh, of our sufferings and to learn to be content and to count it all joy. Uh, and so rejoicing, it isn't just about finding joy in the painful and in the confusing circumstances in life um, that we face. It's not just about putting on a, a fake smile and, uh, you know, faking it till you make it. Uh, it is so much more than that. And that is one of the things that the author of the article points out. That, you know, we do need God's help and his joy to get through hardships and trials in life. You know, we're never promised that there won't be, you know, as Christians, we're not promised that there won't be hardships and trials because there will be. There will always be. But, um, you know, we have him to help us through that, uh, through those things. And we should be leaning on him for that. And we should be uh, rejoicing that, you know, when we are uncertain about life um, in all of its uncertainties, uh, we can know that he, he knows the beginning from the end. He created you and he created your life and he knows how everything is going to turn out and he knows what's up ahead around the corner. And so we don't have to worry and we don't have to fear because he knows it all and he is the one that is leading you and guiding you and helping you through all of it um and you know we should we can rejoice that when we are weak that he is strong his word says that when you're weak you know that's when he's the strongest um that he can really step in and move in our situation and in our life and just show you know how really powerful that he is when we are weak and so that is something to rejoice over and we can rejoice that when we are sad and when we are hurting that his word says that he's near to the brokenhearted and that he will never leave us or forsake us and and that he is our ever-present help in the time of trouble and you know that the, the articles you know those are all good reasons for us to rejoice uh and that we should be rejoicing but the article says that instead of just rejoicing about trying to make it through hard things um that we should be rejoicing simply because of who god is and what he's done for us and because of our relationship with him 
Um, the, and that we should be rejoicing not just in that, but we should be rejoicing with him. And that that's one of the different perspectives uh, that I was talking about uh, that she gives in her article of um, rejoicing with him. And so that's the new mindset that she wants us to get towards rejoicing. Um, and so this is what she says. When we rejoice with God... We're celebrating our relationship with him. We were lost, but now we're found. And so she points out that if you read in Luke chapter 15, that's where Jesus is telling um, the parables about the lost coin, the lost sheep, the lost son. And we will see examples in there, um, in those parables of how the Lord loves to rejoice uh, over his children. And so... Uh, I'm not going to read any of the Luke chapter 15, but you can go back in there and read those parables for yourself um, and just see those examples. And so rejoicing is just a part of the Lord's character. In Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17, it says that the Lord rejoices over us with singing. How cool is that? That he actually sings over us. And I think somewhere in the Bible, I don't know where. But it says that the angels rejoice and sing over us as well. So I think that's really cool. And we should be rejoicing and singing praises over him. And, you know, not just over him, but uh, like she said, with him. And she says in her article that he doesn't want to celebrate on his own. He wants us, you and me, his children, to celebrate with him. And so you can't truly... Um, I, I read a quote somewhere that said you can't truly appreciate and, 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 and get the fullness of something joyful unless you're sharing it with somebody else, right? So when you're really excited and you're joyful and you're happy about something awesome, um, you don't want to just sit there and be happy and excited and joyful by yourself. You want to go tell someone. You want to go share it with someone and be like, yay, and you want to celebrate, right? And so who better to celebrate than with the Lord? Um, you know, that's, yeah, spot on. Um, and so... So we can celebrate and we can rejoice that if you have Jesus in your heart, then your name is written in his book. Your name is registered in heaven. You can rejoice that the Lord has chosen you and set you apart. And, and just you can rejoice that, you know, because of what Jesus did, we have open communication and relationship with our Lord and Savior. We have an abundant life and will live beside him for all eternity that's never gonna end and so sorry here I dropped one of my papers um, but so no matter what your day looks like no matter what your life looks like there is nothing that can se that can separate uh, you or I from from God's love there's nothing that can separate us and so that's in Romans uh, chapter 8 verse 38 to 39 and so go read that and meditate on it and hold it, you know, dear, that no matter, no matter what, there is nothing, 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 nothing that can ever separate you in, from God's love. Um, and so that right there in itself is a reason to rejoice every day and in every minute. Uh, and so if we hang on to the new mindset that, that the author gives us in her article of of not just rejoicing. Sorry, there's sirens going by. I'm in the car line waiting to pick up my daughter from school. Um, but if we if we hold on to the new mindset that she gives us about not just rejoicing, um, you know, through the hard times, but rejoicing alongside with God, um, just in the day to day things, uh, you know, it, rejoicing in the mundane. Um, if we can just hang on to that and choose to look at it from that new perspective and have that new mindset, then we're really gonna begin to just express our joy and our gladness and to truly celebrate our lives um, in a whole entirely new way and in the way that the Lord really intends for us. Um, you know, to do so. So in Philippians 4, 4, it says, rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. 
So you guys have a wonderful day. Go out there and sing and dance and rejoice with the Lord and be joyful. Thank you so much if you are still watching this video. Thank you for hanging in and watching it. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I love you all and I'll see you at my next video. Bye.